Common Mountain Mint. Gets about up to three, three and a half foot tall. White flower, as you can see, spreading. This is one of the most incredible pollinator plants I've ever seen. This is being worked by any number of things from wasps to bees to sweat bees, bumblebees, honeybees. Uh, you've got uh, butterflies. So if you're looking for something that's strictly a pollinator plant and something that's gonna do extremely well, this is the plant you're looking for. Common mountain mint, although it does not grow in the mountains, uh, who knows where that name came from, but uh, great plant for that. Upland dry conditions, uh, adaptable to different conditions of soil conditions, but uh, prefers to be full sun, upland dry. Uh, and as you can see, there's just a lot of activity here always. Uh, pretty reliable as far as the bloom goes. Uh, great plant for that. The lower profile helps in a lot of situations. So keep this one in mind, common mountain mint. Petra spicata, marsh blazing star. Pink in color, gets anywhere from two foot to five foot tall. It's the wetter of the Liatra species. Great for rain garden conditions, decent garden soils that will do fine. Like sandy, rocky conditions, full sun. It's a great pollinator plant. You have everything from longhorn bees, bumblebees, honeybees, uh, caterpillars, uh, different things, butterflies and even the occasional hummingbird. So Liatra spicata, marsh blazing star. Euryngium yuccifolium, also called rattlesnake master, one of the more exotic looking native plants. This is the whole bloom display here. I guess you could call that white. There's a series of small white flowers here. Great pollinator plant, pollinated by multitude of bees, uh, caterpillars. It has a deep taproot system. This is an upland dry plant. Likes full sun, sandy to, it's pretty uh, adaptable to different soil conditions, but uh, upland dry is what it's looking for. Uh, it's July, it's about the middle of July right now, so blooms just started here within the last few weeks, and this will bloom for at least a good month. Great plant if you're looking for something different. Uh, got the name Rattlesnake Master, where uh, some of the Native Americans actually used the, the seed heads to actually for rattles, uh, and then uh, supposedly some of the early pioneers thought that the root system of this plant could be used to treat rattlesnake bites, which uh, turned out to be erroneous. So, uh, but uh, here it is, Rattlesnake Master, Euryngium yuccifolium, great upland plant. Here we are with Silphium terebinthinaceum, which is uh, also called prairie dock. One of the deepest rooted of all the native prairie plants with root systems from six to 10 foot deep, which makes it incredibly drought resistant. Obviously it's a plant that gets anywhere from five foot to eight foot tall with a spread flower head on it, yellow. Uh, it can also handle a certain amount of moisture. So soil conditions that are a little more moist than upland dry. Uh, it's very adaptable for these types of things. So great plant for pollinators. Again, another plant that is pollinated by, visited by bees, hummingbirds. Uh, goldfinches love the seed heads of this. You have to be careful with the silphiums because they spread pretty readily from seed. So as long as you deadhead the seed head, if, uh, if you have it in a garden situation where you don't want it to spread, but in the wild, a great plant, uh, deep rooted system, builds that soil and uh, fantastic for drought resistance. So Prairie Dock, another great pollinator plant. Sporobolus, Heterolepis, Prairie Drop Seed. I would put this plant up against any ornamental grass anywhere. Beautiful native plant to the Midwest. Prairie drop seed, 
like sandy soil conditions, can handle rocky conditions. This is a long-lived perennial grass. It can handle things a lot better than, let's say, more adaptable than little blue stem. Prairie drop seeds, a little more adaptable, can handle rocky, dry conditions, uh, can handle a certain amount of moisture too. Uh, puts on a seed head. This is about the size it gets. It will put on a seed head that adds another couple feet to it. Uh, it has a very distinct odor to the seed. Um, pleasant, but you definitely something that you can recognize to where later on if you're ever in a field and you pick up that odor again, very distinct, you, you'll know that there's prairie drop seed around somewhere. The seed has a high fat content to it. Um, there's some debate whether it's, I believe it's a cool season grass. If you're going to sow it from seed, sow the seed fresh, get seed from the fall before, sow it right away that fall and uh, you'll be fine. It goes into a deep dormancy if, if the seed's around for more than, let's say, by January or February, it's uh, the germination rate will extremely drop. So with prairie drop seed, if you're not getting doing plants, you're looking for fresh seed to be sown in the fall and you should have good success with it in the spring. Coreopsis palmata, prairie coreopsis, shorter profile than Tripteris, which is tall coreopsis, obviously. Gets uh, about this tall, we're in, again, mid-July here in Indiana. Yellow bloom to it, spreads by rhizomes. So when it's happy in a nice spot, you'll get nice coverage, it'll spread out and it'll be happy. Uh, doesn't do real well with tall plants around it, so if you're putting it in a prairie or something with big blue stem and some of these other things, um, it's not gonna be real happy. But in a shorter profile situation, it'll do well. Unfortunately, the seed is hard to come by. This would be a great solar pollinator plant, but uh, seed is limited and extremely expensive. So uh, you can get a few, I guess, uh, some of it established in solar sites and hopefully it'll spread and you'll have some small communities of it. But uh, Prairie Coreopsis, which is uh, Coreopsis palmata, a uh, nice pollinator plant. Uh, herbivores will browse on this, anything from deer to groundhogs, rabbits, horses, different things like that. But uh, great native plant. All right, we're gonna tackle two plants here. Uh, right in front of us, first we have Helianthus mullus, which is downy sunflower. Uh, very unique plant, as you can see, it's spreading, and it will actually occupy an area where it's happy. And anytime when you're looking for something that's gonna compete well and actually keep the weeds out, this is a great plant for that. Uh, this whole area was basically like one plug that was put in probably eight or 10 years ago, and it's spread into different areas here. Um, nice yellow sunflower type head on it. Uh, again, goldfinches like it, pollinated by a lot of different things from the bees to the uh, uh, butterflies. So a uh, great plant for that, but uh, spreading, gets up to about four foot. This is probably about as tall as I've seen it. Uh, might get a little um, higher than this. So a uh, great plant, again, if you're looking for something that's gonna colonize an area where it uh, competes real well against other things. Here's another one called Culver's Root, which is Veronia castrum virginicum. Uh, another great plant. You can see now that we've got bumblebees on it. I looked at it late last night. There were bumblebees, wasps, uh, flies, uh, really pollinated by a lot of different things. Uh, that white seed head is, is the uh, display. Uh, the root system is fibrous, uh, has a tap root, but it will spread a little bit from that. Uh, gets, can get to probably about five foot tall. Uh, has a fibrous root system that's kind of a tap root, but also fibrous. It will spread a little from within the root system. Seeds are extremely small and fall and it will spread from uh, seed, but uh, these are two great plants to consider. The 
Silene regia, royal catch fly. Anything that has this type of color, extremely red like that, very popular. Upland, dry species, rare prairie plant. Uh, you don't see it in very many uh, prairies, but uh, something that you'd really want to add to your collection. Seeds well, does well. Uh, pollinated by hummingbirds. If you're looking to attract hummingbirds, this plant is a must for that. Anything red between this and Lobelia cardinalis, uh, cardinal flowers, great additions for trying to capture honeybee or trying to attract hummingbirds. So great plant for that. Uh, again, Silene regia, royal catch fly. Make sure you get these among your collection in your garden. Asclepius tuberosa, butterfly weed, part of the milkweed family, fantastic plant, orange in color, very striking. Long lived native perennial, extremely deep root system, almost impossible to transplant. So if you find a big one somewhere and you try to transplant it because of the deep tap root, you're not gonna have very much success. It does pretty well from seed. It's looking for upland dry conditions. In moist conditions, it will actually rot and won't do real well. So in the worst soil conditions, upland dry, sandy, this plant's gonna be fantastic for you. Again, popular with the monarchs, pollinated by a lot of different bees. So if you're looking for a great plant, long live, this plant is 50, 60 years old type situation as far as the longevity of this plant. Great plant to have.